Hi, this is Lenny with DRP, and today we're going to talk about bump steer. Now, what is bump steer? Bump steer is toe change through travel. So as the chassis travels, as the suspension moves, the toe of the tire, the tire either toes in or toes out, and, and that's bump steer. Now, how does bump steer work? Bump steer is, the, is a factor of the position of the inner and outer tie rod in. So as the chassis travels, the tie rod changes angle. As that angle changes, that pulls the tire in or pushes it out. And that's the basics of how bump steer works. Now, what all affects bump steer? Of course, chassis travel uh, affects bump steer, but specifically, as the chassis travels, the chassis dives. So it dives forward. Um, that's, that will affect bump steer. As the chassis rolls, that affects bump steer. As the caster changes through uh, travel, uh, that will affect bump steer. Camber can also have a, a little effect on bump steer as well. And a big effect on bump steer is the tread width change. So as the chassis travels, the tread width changes. It, it typically gets narrower. And as that happens, uh, the tie rod sleeve doesn't necessarily get as, as, as narrow as the uh, tread width does, and that will affect bump steer uh, as well. Another thing that will affect bump steer is flex, flex in, in components, whether it be lowers or the, the chassis, uh, steering boxes, etc. So, how do we measure bump steer? Well, the best way to measure bump steer is using a pull-down fixture. And the reason for that is we can actually position the, the chassis at the correct travel with dive and roll in it, uh, and then measure the wheel position and find out what the toe change is, and, and that will be our bump. The reason that's the best method also is because we're fully loading all the suspension components, the ball joints, uh, lower uh, springs, etc. Now, if a pull-down fixture is not an option for you, another way you can do it is you can remove the shocks and springs from the car um, uh, with two jacks up under the chassis and actually lower the chassis down to a track height and then recheck the wheel position. If that's not an option or you want to do something even quicker and simpler than that and you don't have any other method, just get some of your uh, uh, bigger bodies, set them on the front of the car, let the car compress down, put your toe plates back up uh, against the tires, and reset your toe at the track height. What that's going to do is that's not really measuring bump steer as much, but it is allowing you to zero out the bump steer while the car is actually down at track height. Um, now, some of you may ask, well, well, why not just use the traditional bump steer gauge? Well, with the traditional bump steer gauge, what we do is we take the shock and spring off or the spring off, and we actually jack the tire or jack the suspension up and down with the tire off and, and measure over to the chassis. The reason we don't uh, use a traditional bump steer gauge is because it's not an accurate representation of true bump steer. And here's why. When we jack the tire up and down, we're only moving the outer tie rod in. Well, on the track, the outer tie rod in really doesn't move because it's attached to the, to the spindle, which is the tire, because the tire's always on the ground. The side that moves is the inner tie rod in. So we want to move the inner tie rod in. And you say, well, that's the same, isn't it the same thing? No, it's actually not the same thing because the inner tie rod in doesn't move straight up and down. The chassis dives forward, which is an arc with that inner tie rod in. And then the chassis rolls over, which is another arc. So you got a kind of a compound uh, movement there. In addition to that, you do have a tread width change that's happening. So as the, as the tread width narrows, um, uh, we need to get that accurately, and as the chassis rolls, that affects tread width change differently than when you jack the wheel up and down because you're not pushing the upper control arm out and pulling the lower control arm in on the right front and vice versa on the left front. The other thing um, that happens with, with just jacking the wheel up and down is you're not getting the accurate caster reading because when the chassis dives, uh, it actually changes the casters as well, which affects the outer tie rod in uh, location. Finally, when we check bump steer the traditional way, which by jacking the wheel up and down, we are reverse loading the ball joints. 
because there's no spring in there and we're actually jacking up on the lower, that's reverse loading all the joints so it's giving you additional play. That's why oftentimes when you uh, uh, check bump steer the traditional uh, way, it's hard to get a good repeatable measurement because of all that additional play. Um, and that's it for our basic bump steer.